What is that waffle gang? I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip that initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. Yesterday on YouTube, we had two new members, Matt RG and Charmo Z. Thank you so, so much. Your support really does mean the world to me. And for everyone, for all of our members who resubscribe every month, you know, thank you so, so much for your support. I don't say that enough. And for everyone for taking the time out of your day to be here, to join us, to watch the videos, to join us on Discord, all that good stuff. It really does mean that. <laughs> Got a cat here and the dog sat on my lap. What, what is my life right now? <laughs> and with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. <laughs> Our first story comes from co-worker Throwaway. Am I the arsehole for telling my husband he's either married to me or his co-worker? My 37 female husband, 40 male, has been working at his company for 10 years as a maintenance supervisor. About a year ago, they hired Tabitha to work in their accounting department. Since the day she first started working there, she has an infatuation with my husband that has now become an unprofessional and inappropriate. This started when the heat went out in her office. My husband's job as a supervisor is to assign tasks to his employees. However, she is never satisfied with the work they do, even though he says they do great work. So she demands he work on her office. She constantly calls him on his work phone for mundane things. Carpet is loose in a corner, loose screws on her coat hook, and he goes and fixes them without issue. Last year when we went to the company Christmas party, pre-plague times, she was very flirty with him, constantly grabbed his hand. When he introduced her, she grinned at me and said, look, there's Peter, and grabbed his hand and walked away. When we sat at the table, she damn near pushed me out of my seat to sit next to him. My husband told her to get up that it was my seat. She walked off in a huff and when she saw me in the restroom, she shoved past me. I told my husband what happened and he said it was fine, that she was harmless. I told him that she was not fine, that she clearly had feelings for him and she was acting like a jealous girlfriend. The past few weeks, this has ramped up to an astonishing level of inappropriate. She recently moved into a new house and my husband and some of the other guys from work helped her move and put things together. He gave her his personal cell phone number and she has been calling and texting non-stop about things she needs help with. Multiple times a day at all hours of the day and night, she will call and text him for help. Last night at 2am, she called about her heat not working right. My husband said he would go over and look at it after work. I broke down. I told him he was not going, that she could call a technician like everyone else and that he is not her personal maintenance man. I told him very clearly that she has feelings for him and he is so dense he can't see it. I told him that while it's nice to help on occasion, she calls him all the time, asking for help with things she can do on her own. Move boxes slash furniture, or pay to have a repair person come and fix it. I told him that once he gave out his personal phone number that he crossed the line, and I am not comfortable with it. He said that this will most likely be an easy fix and it won't take long. So I cried and told him he can either be married to me or married to her, but I wasn't going to be the third wheel in my own marriage. He said he does not have feelings for her and that I'm overreacting to him just wanting to help a friend. I feel otherwise, am I the asshole? You know, straight away, I gotta say, you're not the asshole in this. You've you've expressed your feelings to him in an open manner, and that's the best you could have done, right? And he's ignoring that, and he's pretty much gaslighting you in a way by kind of making you question your own feelings and saying that you're overreacting to what she's doing. She's clearly flirting, and if he can't see that, you know, there's something wrong there, or he's cheating, one or the other. And I'm just gonna say that one right now. Stand firm on it, and let's go to the comments. Oxbridge comma says, not the asshole. He might be blind to the crush, but uh, doubtful, but you're telling him how aggressively she's treating you and he doesn't seem to care. Trust your gut here, OP. I don't think you're on the wrong track with what you're suspecting. Mama Fen says, you are not the asshole. Hubs, on the other hand, is a grade A, died in the wall, jackhole. Any man who invalidates his wife's concern over behavior this blatant is either banging side chick or is at a bare minimum enjoying the attention, but doesn't want to admit he's enjoying it. Either way, you're in the right here, and if he doesn't willingly shove this woman off, you'll have some decision making to do. Howard Project says, not the arsehole, your husband is either incredibly dense or he's cheating on you and lying. Redheaded Ravenclaw says, not the arsehole, either your husband is extremely dense or he's fully aware and is gaslighting you. Whichever it is, it isn't on. I know what I'm doing here says, not the arsehole, it doesn't matter that he doesn't have feelings for her. She does for him, and by her behavior, it's clear. 
She's blatantly okay with disrespecting you in front of him at Christmas party. She will eventually escalate and she's already been doing. Since he won't set boundaries with her, you're not being crazy and he should respect you as his wife. You don't feel comfortable with it and that should be the end of it and he should respect that. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of the situation? Do you think that Opie's husband is playing away? Do you think he's just enjoying the attention? Should he be doing so? Should he be saying something? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is from Dominique0912. Am I the arse of a not sitting down with a boy with ADHD? Hi there, this happened a while ago, but I still get mixed reactions whenever it comes up. I, female 19, 17 at the time, had a few families where I came to help out slash tutor young kids, age ranging from 7 to 12, with their schoolwork. This is about one of those families. It was a single mum with a son, 7, and a daughter, 9. I'd been sitting down with a girl for a few weeks to help her improve her reading skills while mum sat down with a son for calculus. The girl really did her best in those couple of weeks. There was a significant improvement. During my time with her and I often heard the mum get frustrated with her son. He wouldn't focus and wouldn't sit still. So one day she asked me to switch and I take the son. He struggles with his multiplication. His mum had warned me that he has ADHD. It didn't take long for me to realise that it was difficult for him to sit on a chair for 45 to 60 minutes and focus on paper. So I took him to the hall and made up a little game. I asked him the sums, like what is three times four? And if he got it right, he could take one step up the stairs. If he got it wrong, one step down. I had a little bag with me with erasers in funny shapes. If he reached the top of the stairs, he'd get to pick one. The kid had a blast and it didn't take him long to reach the top. He picked out a frog shaped eraser and ran to his mum to tell her about it. When she let me out the house, she pressed the money, seven euros, in my hands and told me not to come back. When I asked her if I'd done something wrong, she told me she was very displeased with my little game. I was supposed to make him sit down and make him learn from the paper. I think every child learns differently and I thought this way I could have the child enjoy learning new things instead of him getting frustrated over not being able to do something. Some of my friends told me I should have just done what the mum wanted since she's paying me and it's her child. So Reddit, am I the arsehole for not sitting down with a boy with ADHD? You know, dealing with a child with ADHD, and I know a few teachers, and um, obviously they get a, quite a few children that come through the system with that's diagnosed with ADHD, and they do pretty much similar things, that they, they try to involve them in different ways. They try to do something that might help them, like more active, like take them on the playground and, and, and make up a little game that involves their, their maths work. Obviously they don't do it directly, they do it through like a, a teaching assistant, but I digress. What I'm saying is they're totally right to be doing this because, you know, not every child learns in the same way. And it's not just children with ADHD. This is just children in general. All children learn in different ways. And, you know, if you can accommodate that, then that's absolutely fantastic. And there are times when a child does need to learn to sit down and do their work, like for tests and stuff like that. But in a home scenario, when you can accommodate this sort of learning, you absolutely go for it because... The, what other way are they going to learn? They're clearly not learning the other way and they enjoyed the game that was being played. So I can't say you're the arsehole and well done to you. And it's a shame that this kid is going to grow up in, in this way, you know. It's not fair. But let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say. Mykonos says not the arsehole. Well, you actually help the kid learn. You work with the ADHD, not against it. That mum is a giant arsehole. I feel really bad for the son. Light Rain Peaches says, not the arsehole, I have a neurodivergent child and what you did is exactly what a therapist or do with her and recommend we do with her. I feel sad for the kid that his mother is trying to force him to adapt to her way instead of allowing him what works best for him. Spooky Lover of Horror says, not the arsehole, you actually got a child to learn. As a very wise man once said, you don't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Dr. Moista says, not the arsehole. What you did was show the mum her method was wrong though. You probably embarrassed her. She's probably really mad at herself too. An old long sign says, not the arsehole. The mother could have simply told you to stop the game if she didn't like it. There was no need to ask you to leave, especially since her daughter improved with your help and her son was clearly learning better. I get that the mother wants her son to learn the normal way, but that does not work for everyone and she should understand that. Now, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of the scenario? Did, was the mother embarrassed? Was, did she have a right to be embarrassed and, and tell her to leave like that? Or was OP totally right in every way in the situation? Which is what I personally think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from a throwaway account. 
Am I the arsehole for giving my son's girlfriend a list of requirements if they're going to receive financial support from me after I was given a list of requirements to see their baby? I, 49 female, have a son, 21 male, and his girlfriend, 21 female. His girlfriend is pregnant and because they're in a rough patch, both of them also dropped out of school. I've been helping them out with money. For the most part, I like his girlfriend well enough, but she's a bit overbearing during this pregnancy. Not that I really blame her. Today they came over and his girlfriend decided to give me a list of do's and don'ts to my husband and I if we wanted to have contact with their child. This was mostly reasonable, have vaccines, don't swear around the baby, handle baby with care, don't show up unannounced, no sexism slash racism and any sort of ism around the kid etc. Some of them were a bit overbearing. When the baby is older, no tickling or sweets or no cartoons, no baby talk etc. I took issues with this for two reasons. Number one, it seems insulting and condescending. Some of the items on the list are things we would never do, like racism and sexism. One struck me as really odd. We're also not anti-vaxxers. It feels like she's pretty much assuming the worst of us. Excluding, of course, we wouldn't swear like a sailor around a child. We would always call before we visit. They show up unannounced more than us. Two, some of the items on the list are extreme. I understand these are her rules and how she plans to raise the baby, but the idea I'd lose access to my grandchild because I bake cookies with them is extreme and I don't want to walk on eggshells or go through the hurt of losing my grandchild, especially if I feel like it's the grandparent's job to spoil the child. Within reason, of course. To clarify, I understand how these requirements could be necessary. If we weren't suited to be around children, I would understand. So in response, I said fine, but now here's a list of requirements to receive financial support. In the past, we've always trusted them and given them a monthly allowance. As long as we didn't think they were deceiving us or blowing money or asking for even more, we let them do what they want with all the money. So I added the stipulations like wanting to see their budget to ensure they didn't 1. Eat out 2. Buy unnecessary clothing 3. Didn't go to hair salons instead of barbers 4. Had to spend a certain amount on the baby 5. Didn't buy hobby related stuff etc. And finally, financial support would be lost if we're to be denied access to the baby. <laughs> there were more stipulations but I'm sure you get the point. I made this list and gave it to both of them in exchange for the list of baby requirements. Both my son and girlfriend were upset with this. I said previously I had trusted them but since you didn't trust us, we wouldn't trust them. I also told them how disrespectful I thought they were for giving me a list when they rely on my husband and I for support. His girlfriend said I wouldn't be able to see the baby. I told them they could leave. My husband and I are both conflicted over this and I'm wondering if I overreacted. Am I the arsehole? I personally love the comeback in this post, you know, and in some ways I'm, I'm like, yes, they definitely deserved that for the, the way they're talking to you and the, the way they're, you know, being condescending towards you. But at the same time, these are young parents, these are 21 year olds. Yes, they're adults, but they're still learning in life and they've got a child on the way. So they're getting very protective, especially the mother by the sounds of it is being very, very protective. And instead of like stepping back and thinking and thinking about it logically, he gave them a list of your stipulations, which is just a comeback, a clout back, which is only gonna cause tension between you when you could have stepped back and said, look, I've been on this earth for 49 years. Let me tell you about my experience and, and help them out in that way and said, look, I don't need these stipulations. Can we ease them a bit? And you know, as an adult figure in their life, teach them the correct way to go about this and not, you know, do what you did. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I can totally see where OP was coming from. That list is absolutely ridiculous in some ways. And I can see myself personally being offended by it. But from an outside looker like myself, looking into the story, I have the ability to say, look, the best way, well, I personally think the best way about it is to stand back and teach them rather than, you know, just clap back at them. But let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Semirian says, wow, not the arsehole. And frankly, I love your reply. The fact that they started with, if you want contact, you will do the following, is a wonderful thing called blackmail. You know who it's a bad idea to blackmail. The people are already financially supporting you. Play stupid games. Throwaway says, torn between, no one's an arsehole here and everyone sucks here. At its basic, their baby equals their rules. Your money equals your rules. Neither of you is wrong for putting your stipulation out there, but both of you could have handled this more maturely, I think. It isn't rocket surgery, says info. Is it possible that the girlfriend's parents are much less trustworthy than you? So a list drawn up that applies to both sets of grandparents, to be fair. OP replies to this saying, my son's girlfriend has very little contact with her parents from what I can tell. So I don't think this was a general list for both of us, but I suppose it's possible. And with that info as well, could we maybe assume that 
if she doesn't have contact with her parents there's something deeper there that that could be in her head that she doesn't trust her parents so she wants to be absolutely crystal clear on you know she wants to look after her baby as much as possible because of the way she's been scarred by her own parents but you know i'm just throwing that one out there that could be completely wrong and Elitza says, sorry, but you're the asshole. Sad to see all these comments about your awesome power move. Your son and his girlfriend are super young first time parents in a vulnerable position. You're a parent with way more life experience. Presumably you love your son and will love your grandchild and want them in your life. Rather than take this as a teachable moment to talk about your son and his girlfriend, admittedly somewhat ridiculous fear and rules, you dropped down to their level and retaliated. Very immature, petty and unnecessary escalation of conflict. You have no obligation to support them, of course, but there would be better ways to deal with that and how you choose to. You have a right to be offended or hurt by their list of rules, but you should talk to your son and his girlfriend about it like an adult who cares about them. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of the situation? Do you think OP handled it well? Do you think they should have gave their, their own list of stipulations against the ridiculous ones that, that the girlfriend brought, brought to her? Or do you think she should have stepped back and said, look, I have way more life experience than you. Let me help you out here. And I'm not saying life experience leads to good choices because, you know, as adults like myself, make bad choices every single day. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from a deleted user. Am I the arsehole for asking my daughter to share her college fund with her brother? I have two kids, Luke is 20 and Grace is 18. My soon to be ex-husband has a younger sister who is the same age as Luke. When Luke was eight, he put gum in her hair as a prank and he was severely punished but nothing could subdue my mother-in-law. She had to cut her daughter's hair though she spent a small fortune on the best quality hair extension she could and SIL hated Luke from that moment on. Mother-in-law and her husband hated him as well. She said he wasn't her grandson. He never allowed her in the house. Her husband actually said he should drop dead. Looks are everything in that family. My mother-in-law pretty much never saw Luke again. Never bought him a Christmas or a birthday gift. I wanted to go no contact, but my husband insisted that he wasn't losing his mum and continued to go over there with Grace. My husband also has an older sister with two kids. I knew mother-in-law paid for their college, but I figured she would not pay for either of ours. Well, my daughter recently turned 18 and mother-in-law let her know that she has $200,000 for her. Grace didn't try to rub it in, but she was very emotional and couldn't control her reaction in front of Luke because up until this point, she had been looking for scholarships and planning on community college. Luke does go to community college while working part-time. I asked Grace to consider sharing the money because of how irrational her grandmother is and because Luke is literally being punished for something he did at eight. Grace got offended and said she already felt bad for Luke and I as a mother should be impartial and not guilt tripping her. My soon to be ex also got mad and said I put pressure on her and now she feels uncomfortable. God, this is one of those stories where there's like several layers to it and it's just so sad to see this family dynamic and that's who sucks in this story. It's like an everyone sucks here for the whole family apart from the kids. They didn't do nothing in this but the family is messed up. Hating a child from eight years of age for what they did by putting gum in their hair unless there's something deeper that we're not hearing, hearing here about Luke, you know. And for you and your husband to sit there and watch the grandmother do this over all these years and, and sound like not say very much to it. it. It just, that's crazy to me. And I think if the grandmother did get wind of, you know, the daughter giving some money to the son, I think she'd pull it away. If she dislikes him that much, she has that much hatred against him from eight years of age that she hasn't really done much for him ever since then, she would take the money away. That is just some toxic stuff going on right there. But let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. AT Vig says you're the arsehole but not for asking your daughter to share. You're the arsehole for staying in a marriage for so long and allowing your mother-in-law and her family to emotionally abuse your son while favouring his sister in his face. It probably hurt him even more that his own father was allowing it to happen and even encouraged it by still having a relationship with his mother and visiting with your daughter. And Josie Whale says you're the arsehole two things. One, if Grace even hinted that she was giving money to Luke, your mother-in-law would pull the money and you know it. Two, I find it very hard to believe that Luke is not troubled. Either what he did at eight was way worse than whoops, got gum in your hair, or just part of a pattern. Doesn't really matter though, you're responsible for your own kid's tuition. Look at the mother-in-law money like Grace got a scholarship. She's all set, so figure out what you want to do for Luke. The Gato says, everyone sucks here except your kids. You are not the arsehole to ask Grace to share the money, and your daughter is not the arsehole if she says no. Your mother-in-law and father-in-law are the arseholes for obvious reasons. You and your husband are the arseholes for allowing them to treat Luke that way and show favoritism towards your daughter all those years. 
Maleficent ad says, everyone sucks here. You can't demand she share. What you can do is say that she pay for all her education by herself because she has funds and focus on helping Luke with your money. If she complains, you can point out that if she's cool with grandma giving money only to her, then she needs to be quiet about you doing the same for Luke. I say everyone sucks here because your husband encouraged the favoritism and your mother-in-law is a cow. <laughs> and Nebsy Websy says, you're the asshole. Your daughter is not responsible for him. You are. The money is for her, not him. Don't try and guilt it into splitting it or even mention it again. You already got told no. Now, what do you guys make of the situation? What do you think of OP and the whole family dynamic? I think it's pretty messed up that they, like they say multiple times in the comments that they're showing favoritism to one of the children. I find that absolutely amazing that people, people can do that for all these years as well, since eight years old. Wow. Now, what do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. Waffle gang. <laughs> and I hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love to you. Bye bye.